Hello, this is Andras and today from Optics Trade and we are here to do a compact binoculars buying guide today. Uh, we are on the hills of Pohorje, uh, around 15 kilometers from our headquarters in Slovenska Bistrica. We went through the local gorge and hiked up to this scenic viewpoint at around 770 meters of elevation. And we brought various binoculars along to put them to the test and uh, basically to find out which one is the best. Uh, in regards to price range, we have divided our compact binoculars into five categories. So that's below 100 euros, 100 to 300 euros, uh, 300 to 500, 500 to 1000 and above 1000 euros. Uh, in each of these respective categories, we're going to um, point out all the compact bin binoculars which we chose and of course present a winner in each respective category. A compact binocular is small and lightweight. The objective lens diameter is from 28 millimeters all the way up to 36 millimeters, with 30 and 32 millimeters being the most commonly used values. The magnification, the most common one is eight times or 10 times. We also have other magnification. We have six times, seven times, eight and a half times, 12 times, but these are really rare. So we'll be focusing on the eight and 10 times. Um, the most com the, the differences between the 8 and 10 times magnification, there are a few. So with 8 times you'll have a wider field of view. With 10 times you'll naturally have a narrower field of view, but you'll be able to see more details. Also with the 8 times magnification, the handshaking will be less noticeable. You'll get you'll benefit from the bigger exit pupil with 8 times magnification. Now we know that compact binoculars are not designed for use in dusk but you will have a little bit more brighter picture, picture when it starts to get dusky with the eight times magnification. As regards the use with tripods, compact binoculars are not often mounted on tripods because they're lightweight, but uh, if you are willing to mount binoculars on a tripod, it will be the 10 times magnification binocular because with the eight times, you will not have that much handshaking. Now, the last thing I want to point, here is the, point out here is the prism type. Most uh, bino compact binoculars feature roof prisms of the Schmidt and Packen type. Um, Abe Koenig prisms um, are not uh, in any of the compact binoculars that we know of. Um, the Poro prism binoculars here are really rare, but I have uh, one of the examples here. This is Swarovski Habicht, which still uses the Poro prisms and therefore has a unique shape. So Andras, which are the most common fields of use for compact binoculars? Compact binoculars are commonly used by hikers, travelers, um, campers and other nature enthusiasts. They are a great, great companion for longer treks because of their compact size and uh, light weight. Uh, because of that, you can also carry them strapped around your neck for longer and you can easily store them in a backpack. If you look at them, you can also tell that they're a great gift for your loved one or for a child, again, because of their size. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Is it also possible to use them for, let's say, for hunting? We generally don't recommend using compact binoculars in hunting situations because hunting often takes place uh, in dusk and uh, compact binoculars aren't designed to be used in dusk. They will not perform well. There are some exceptions, though. Uh, in mountain hunting, a compact binocular might actually come in handy. This is because um, they perform well during the day and mountain hunting often takes place during the day. And because they're light, you won't have problems carrying them around in your backpack or strapped around your neck. Can compact binoculars be used by bird watchers? Well, uh, some bird watchers also use compact binoculars, but they go for higher magnifications, like 10 times, 12 times, to see the details uh, better. 
uh, and uh, but I would say they also go more for the 42 millimeter lens, which uh, which is better for a for a prolonged use because it's more comfortable to yeah, use, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, what about the pocket binoculars? Shouldn't they go for pocket instead? So um, if you're looking for uh, small size and lightweight, you could go for pocket binoculars, but you have to keep in mind that with pocket binoculars, the eyepieces are a little bit narrower. And uh, when you press them against the, against the face, uh, they're not that comfortable. And uh, consequently, you will not be able to use them for longer amounts of time. So if you're an infrequent user of binoculars, then pocket is the way to go. But if you want comfort, then go for compact binoculars or bigger ones. While we're talking about this, we have to point out that for marine applications, we also wouldn't recommend compact binoculars. We have a separate category for that, that is seven times magnification combined with a 42 millimeter objective lens, which tends to be the most optimal configuration. And uh, with seven times magnification, the probability of getting seasick is much lower than with higher magnifications. And also for astronomy use, we wouldn't recommend them because the biggest magnification is 12 times, which is not enough for uh, astronomy applications. First, we have a price class, everything that's below 100 euros. We don't have any binoculars press, uh, price less than 100 euros with us because we generally believe that they're more suitable as a gift for children. If you're looking for a decent optical experience, we would advise you to pay it, spend at least 100 to 300 euros for a binocular. Okay, so now we have binoculars priced from 100 to 300 euros here. Today, can you tell us what are the specifications, the features of binoculars in this price class? Well, Andras, basically these are entry price class binoculars, which are mostly used for um, uh, outdoor enthusiasts and novices when it comes to optics binoculars, that is. Um, so for users who use their binoculars, I would say seldomly, yeah. not very often, but seldomly. Um, they also feature in most cases uh, plastic housing, so the build quality is not as good as uh, with higher ranks. And they also mostly, I would say, have um, a single bridge, as you can see, some exceptions, as this Cytron here. Uh, they have the open bridge, which is better for handling and so on. Uh, eye cups, they also, the eye cups are mostly uh, of a, I would say, two-face two ty two types. Uh, they have uh, one face and the second face for glass wearers. Uh, mostly they're made in China, the majority of them. They also have a, the diopter setting on, uh, on the right eye cup, like this, here. Uh, and they have the warranty up to two years, but there are some exceptions to that, like Vortex, Athlon, and perhaps some others. Okay, so we put the binoculars from this price class to the test. First, I have to point out which ones we brought with us. So we have the Hawk Endurance ED, Vortex Diamondback HD, Vortex Raptor, Delta Optical One, and Cytron S2 Blue Sky. And we couldn't decide uh, on the winner. We decided that it's a tie between the Vortex Diamondback HD and between Cytron S2 Blue Sky. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Vortex has exceptional build quality, magnesium housing, a VIP warranty, big field of view, but it's difficult to use if you're a glasses wearer. So the, the ones in our team who wear glasses could not use Vortex Diamondback HD. The second winner, so it's a tie again, as I said, is Cytron S2 Blue Sky. Uh, its advantages are exceptional image sharpness for this price class, also an open bridge configuration, which is a real rarity in this price class. You can use it single-handedly you can also, it also is much lighter uh, uh, than average. Uh, it, its disadvantage is that it's a bit long for a compact binocular. So this is practically its only downside. What I also have to point out here is Delta Optical One, which is almost a pocket binocular if you look at its size. Um, and as such, it really can be used on longer treks without problems. Easily stored in a backpack.
Okay, so now we have binoculars priced from 300 to 500 euros here. What are the features of these? Well, these are good for novice and advanced users, which uh, use binoculars often, but don't wish to pay uh, uh, a higher amount of money for them. Uh, also, the optical quality is higher, the build quality naturally. is better, of course, naturally. Uh, they also have less plastic parts uh, in its construction, so um, they also use, they also, they also provide you with more accessories. Uh, also, the, the, the quality of the accessories is higher, of a higher class. What about the eye cap positions? They also have, uh, mostly they have three positions. Uh, they use three positions. The binoculars from this series, from this price class, are mostly made in China, seldomly in, uh, in Japan. We have some examples. Yeah, for, rare, for example, right? the Philippines and Japan and so on. Usually they feature a single bridge design, so that's like this, like all four binoculars which we have here. Um, and also the diopter setting is generally placed on the right side. What about the warranty periods? Are there any, lo are they any longer than with lower price binoculars? It mostly, it, the, the warranty period is mostly up to five years. And of course also there are some exceptions to this rule. And the housing is aluminum mostly, right? The housing is mostly made of aluminum, yeah. We put the binoculars from this price class to the test as well. We have here GPO Passion ED, Steiner Skyhawk, Nikon Monarch 7 and Zeiss Terra ED. It was not that difficult for us to choose the winner because GPO Passion ED really excels in all aspects. It is great both in terms of build quality and optical quality. The uh, housing is magnesium which is a rarity in this price class still. The eye cups are of high quality and can be fixed in three positions altogether. It's available in four colors and the edge sharpness is on a high level as well. Perhaps the only downside is that GPO is a fairly new brand on the optical market and it will take a while for them to gather uh, some followers. I also have to point out Nikon Monarch 7 here because it is the smallest out of the four and size Terra ED. We were really fond of uh, of its optical performance. Uh, we concluded that it performs much better than the 42 mm objective lens model, um, providing high quality images. And uh, I think that Zeiss really did, uh, they did outdo themselves with this model. So Andras, what are the most common characteristics of compact binoculars which we have here and the price class from 500 to 1000 euros? Yeah, so here we already have uh, prestigious brands such as Swarovski, Zeiss, Leica, we also have Meopta here. And uh, naturally the build quality as well as optical quality is on a higher level than with binoculars price lower. If we look at the build quality, we have magnesium housings, we have quality eye cups that can be fixed in three to four positions most of the times. We usually have already the central diopter setting instead of the diopter setting on the right ocular, which is still present on some binoculars. Single bridge design is still prevalent. As regards the optical quality, the glass is of, the, it's of higher quality. We have more high quality coatings that in increase light transmission rate and image quality. Overall, the images are uh, with more vivid colors, uh, higher in contrast and everything like that. Uh, then we have the warranty periods, which are around 10 years, but you can count on these manufacturers on providing service even when this warranty period expires. Uh, binoculars in this price class, those nearing the 500 euro price point are made in Japan, some still in China, but those who are nearing the 1000 euro price point are already made in Europe. You get more quality accessories in the box and the boxes uh, themselves look much nicer. Um, I would say uh, that these are all for someone who is an experienced binoculars user and also for someone who wants to leap straight into the high quality uh, in the world of optics.
So we have put five binoculars to the test in this price class. The Leica Trinovit HD, Swarovski Companion CL, Swarovski Habicht, Meopta Star B1 and Zeiss Conquest HD. It was very hard to determine the actual winner because in this price class we have phenomenal binoculars. But we put Leica and the Zeiss Conquest HD to share the first place. Um, the build quality is better with Leica and also the, the contrast of the image is also very good with Leica. Size Conquest HD is better optically, it has better central and uh, edge sharpness and on top of that it has uh, a better field of view, the best among all of here. The focus is quite interesting, it has a really fast focus and some people like this, some don't and we have to point out that the image when you look through is a little bit yellowish. The downsides are also its size and weight. It is one of the heaviest binoculars in this class. We also have to point out the Swarovski CL Companion, which is uniquely designed. It has a unique bridge, allowing you to hold the binocular single-handedly, and it is also really lightweight. So we have the last category, the category of binoculars, the top premium, above uh, 1,000 euros. Andras, what are the most common uh, characteristics uh, regarding these binoculars? Well, first I have to point out that all the binoculars that we have here, the compacts, are priced above 1,500 euros. And that is because in between 1,000 and 1,500 euros, there are almost no compact binoculars. These binoculars are for someone who wants quality without compromises. Someone who is looking for topmost performance, who uses binoculars on a daily basis, or even perhaps collects binoculars. Only the most prestigious brands can be found here. So we have Leica, Zeiss, Swarovski, and now Blazer is also a newcomer in this price class. The quality, so we have magnesium housings mostly, we have three to four iCup positions and iCups are usually of really high quality. We have both single bridge and open bridge design. The diopter is already mostly central, no longer limited to the right ocular. The blazer here is the exception. As regards the optical characteristics, we have more coatings. We also have the coatings that are applied to the external parts of the lenses and are used to prevent dew accumulation, dust accumulation on the lenses, like calls this Aquadura, size Lototech, and so on. Uh, the glass is of really high quality, and both optical and build quality are on, high, uh, on the higher level than binoculars from the price class from 500 to 1000 euros. Um, the warranty periods are 10 years, mostly, some offer even more. Um, but you can expect uh, the manufacturers to repair your binoculars even after this period expires. They're also, if you purchase these binoculars, it's a good investment because they tend to hold their resale value well. If you purchase binocular price 200 euros, you can't really expect to sell it after 10 years. This is not the case with uh, binoculars from this price class. Edge sharpness is on a high level as well as the central sharpness, of course. Um, they provide wide field of view. Uh, images are rich in colors and high in contrast. Some of these binoculars, for example, this Ultravit HD, are also available in special limited editions such as Ultravit HD Plus Zagato, which is available for 3,500 euros and perfect for someone who collects binoculars. So in the last category we have four binoculars, the Leica Ultravit HD+, the Zeiss Victory FL, Blazer Primus and the Swarovski EL. We have to say it was very hard to choose the, uh, the absolute winner because of the technologies which manufacturers use, but according to our test which we performed, the slight advantage goes to uh, Swarovski EL. That's only a slight advantage. So Swarovski is optically the best, as we, as we mentioned. It has a very gentle, very sensitive, fast focusing system. Uh, it has a very flat field of view due to the uh, Swaro Vision technology, which uh, Swarovski uses. And we have to point out here that some people like this, some don't. Some but don't, yeah. We as you, are fond of it. That, that's correct, yeah. As you can see, it's also very long. It's not very bulky, but it's very long. So if, if we take a look amongst these two, this one is definitely uh, the longest. 
uh, it has a good system for, for straps. As you can see, it's very comfortable for handling and so on. And also the open bridge design, which is, uh, which is the only one amongst the four, and it's very comfortable to use. So Leica Ultravit HD Plus and Size Victory FL are really not far behind. So it's also a matter of taste here. For some people, the FL might be the best and for some people, Ultravit HD Plus might be the best. With the Leica, we have to point out the amazing, superb build quality and high quality eyepieces. Also, the image is really high in contrast. Uh, with size also, the optical, optically, it's one of the best binocular, compact binoculars out there. Uh, one thing that we don't like is the housing which is made out of plastic. We think that a magnesium housing would be better for a binocular in this price class. Blaster Primus features a very elegant design and I have to point out that we really liked the color combination used for the housing. Uh, it also has a really nice slow focus that especially hunters will be fond of. So we had great fun today. I hope that you found the video that we made useful. If you have any recommendations for future videos, guides, please don't hesitate to uh, leave us a comment below or write to our email. Take care. Bye. Bye.